what happened? Uh, what am I doing here? Oh, God, my head. Oh, my leg. Uh, uh, You're in the hospital, of course. You were in a car accident. You have a concussion. And you broke your leg. How long have I been like this? You've been here five days. I've had so many strange dreams. Uh, I dreamt that Midge was here. She was holding my hand and reading to me. And I dreamt that she was engaged to Ken. Uh. Midge has been here quite a bit. She's read to you. She's held your hand. She's tried to bring you out of this terrible state that you've been in. And I think it has helped. But it's not true that she's engaged to Kent. Oh, thank God. I'm so glad to hear that. Oh, thank God. I sincerely hope you mean that, Alan. Because if you don't and you hurt her, I'll break your other leg. Mrs. Sherwood, your son could be released as soon as tomorrow. Now, it's going to be six, maybe even eight weeks before he can put pressure on that leg. And he still has concussion. He needs to be watched carefully. Bring him to my house tomorrow? I simply can't think of such a thing. He simply can't come to my home tomorrow. I wasn't planning on having him for at least a week. Tomorrow is my bridge club. The following day, I'm hosting a high tea. I have a charity banquet and a school board meeting. I simply can't have him at my house tomorrow. He needs to go to his own home and be taken care of there. Perhaps you could suggest some help. Maybe there can be a nurse we can hire. Mrs. Sherwood, I appreciate the fact that you are a busy woman, but your son is going to be ready to go home tomorrow. Now the best I can do is keep him here until the evening instead of releasing him in the morning. That will give you a little time to make your arrangements. But I'm going to tell you right now, he needs care. He can't walk. He can't put pressure on that leg for another six weeks. So which is it, doctor? Six or eight weeks? And for the next 72 hours, he needs to be watched because he has a concussion. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have other patients to attend to. Good evening. Poor Alan. Oh. I don't know. This is terrible. We gotta do something. I wonder if I could take care of him for a few days. Between Ricky and I, we should be able to handle it. Hey, find that jacket on the side of the road? Jeez. Where's Mom? Nice to see you too, Alan. <laughs> Mom's outside talking to the doctor right now. Well, I'm supposed to go home sometime today. I don't know how Mom's gonna take that. But, uh, anyway, how are things going at home? You getting along okay? I'm doing all right. I, uh, I get along okay with her. But you know how she is. I, uh, I just try to stay out of her way as much as possible, especially when she's busy. <laughs> well, you're definitely going home tonight. I know that because I just talked to the doctor before I came in here. I'm gonna come back later and pick you up. Guess I'll be in my old bedroom again, won't I? You're not going to mom's house. I'm taking you to your house. What? I already moved my stuff in. I'm gonna be taking care of you. Midge is going to come for a couple of days and help out. So Mom refused to take care of me, huh? <laughs> that figures. But you're moved in. Uh, and Midge is going to help too? She isn't moving in as well, is she? <laughs> no, smartass, she's not moving in. You think every woman's willing to just jump into your bed with you? You know Midge, she's not like that. She has a lot of self-respect. 
I don't know why she wants to help you. You haven't treated her that well. But there it is. So uh, I think you should be grateful to her. She's done a lot already. Well, hello, Barbie Roberts. Fancy meeting you here. Hello, Stacy. Well, I'm certain you've heard of Alan Sherwood's serious car accident. Alan was in a car accident? Oh, yes. I'm surprised you haven't heard, given your relationship with Alan Sherwood. Anyway, a drunk driver hit him head on. The drunk driver was instantly killed. Alan broke both his arms, both his legs, and he's in a coma. And they don't know if he's going to make it. But guess who's been in constant attendance upon him? Midge Hadley. Well, I bet she's taking good care of him. Oh, no, poor Alan. When did all of this happen? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a week ago, maybe two. I just simply can't recall right now. Excuse me, Stacy, but I must go now. Ken, this is Barbie Roberts. Hi, Barbie. How you doing? Uh, I, I'm sorry for disturbing you, but I have a question. Is Alan Sherwood's life in danger? I heard that he was in a car accident. He was, but his life's not in danger. Oh. Well, I, uh, I tried to call his mother's home and no one was there. Then I tried to call Midge Hadley's house and no one was there either. So I thought I had better call you. What happened? Barbie, Alan's going to be fine. He broke his leg, and uh, he had a concussion. And uh, he's actually home now. But Barbie, I find it kind of odd that you wouldn't know any of this. I mean, at Midge's party, you made it pretty clear that you and me were an item. Well, Ken, Alan and I are not an item, nor have we ever been. We uh, did leave the party together, but very soon after I made him take me home, I realized he wasn't for me. That's all I can say about that now. Oh, well, the night of the party, uh, I think you gave a different impression than that, Barbie. <gasps> oh, I, well, it was a mistake but I don't want to talk about it right now. Please, I, uh, I have to go. Dear God, can't I do anything right when it comes to her? I told her too soon that I loved her and chased her away, but at least she's not with Alan. She made that pretty clear, but I'm angry with her still. I gotta get over that because I do love her, I do. Hello, Mrs. Sherwood. This is Barbie Roberts. I heard your son was in a very serious car accident. Yes, he was in an accident. Yes, I heard it was about a week ago. Oh, it's been more than a week now, but he's home. Who told you? Ken Carson told me. He gave me the details. He also said that he was recovering quite nicely. Oh, yes, he's recovering very well. Thank you. That's good to hear. I, I just wanted to know if I could... Uh, drop something off for him. You know, a get well gift. He's not here, dear. You have to take it to his house. Oh, he's not at your home? No. Oh. Ricky's helping to take care of him, and he has a housekeeper. Oh, I see. Well, if he can't see me, I'll leave it with Ricky or the housekeeper. Thank you. Goodbye. Ken, I couldn't help but grab you and hug you. Thank you for telling me what Barbie said over the phone. Oh, well. I, I feel like we both have hope now. We do. I think things are going to work out for both of us. Yep. Oh, I'm sure they will, Ken. I'm sure they will. Oh. <sighs> what the fuck? I agree, Midge. Things are looking up for both of us. 
At least I hope so too. But now at least we have a chance, like I said. Look, I've got a couple of gifts for Alan. I've got a bottle of uh, really good scotch for him and some good scars. I'll leave him with you. I know he likes that sort of thing. I don't want to come in yet. He and I haven't uh, been the best of friends lately and uh, I don't want to push him. You know what I mean? Ken, won't you reconsider and come in? I'm sure Alan would like to see you. No, I'll wait. All right, I won't push it. But I know he's gonna love the gifts you're gonna leave with him. It'll make his day. It's hard for him to be so incapacitated right now. Well, I gotta go fix lunch anyway. The housekeeper's out for the afternoon. And I know he and Ricky are, well, they have big appetites. And I'm sure they're hungry by now. So I'll see you later. Thanks again, Ken, for the great news. Goodbye. I guess Stacy was right after all. Midge and Ken are together. After what I just saw, I guess it's pretty plain. She must be just being nice to me. Well, that's a switch. Alan, I have something for you from Ken. May I please come in? I guess I deserve it. But it sure doesn't feel good. Midge, come here for a moment. I'd like to have a little talk with you before your father and I go out for dinner. Today when I was in the beauty parlor, I overheard some disturbing gossip about you and Ken Carson. It upset me at the time, but I did consider the source unreliable. But still, I'd like to talk to you about it and hear what you have to say. Gossip about Ken Carson and I? Uh, mother, I, I don't understand. I, I truly don't. Well, the source of this gossip was Stacy, and I think you know who I mean. Well, that creature was telling everyone that you were sharing food with Ken and staring into his eyes. And she made it sound like sharing food was public fornication. The other thing that she did is she said that you two were on the dance floor and that you were clasped to one another in an embrace that looked also like fornication. Mother! Well, of course I don't believe any of that, but I want to know what kind of behavior precipitated this sort of gossip. What gave her the fuel for this fire? Can you tell me what happened? The only thing I can think of is Ken and I went out to eat, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago now. And, uh, well, we ate and we drank and we had a good time with one another. And well, let me think, well, we did dance. But, uh, I mean, we might have danced a little bit close, but he and I are just friends. We were feeling sorry for ourselves over something, and, well, I don't know. <sighs> Gee, that's Stacy. Leave it to her. Ugh, <sighs> this is awful. Midge, I know you'll be careful in the future. But if I ever see that Stacy again, I'll throttle her. Gee, Alan, you sure missed a good dinner tonight. I mean, it was great. I don't think I've ever eaten so well in my life. And, you know, I think you hurt the housekeeper's feelings by not eating. She kind of takes that sort of thing personally, I think. Anyway, why don't you let me make you a dinner plate? You know, leftovers, I'll heat it up. And uh, then later on, you can tell her how good it was. What do you say? Besides, you shouldn't be missing meals. Okay? Thanks, Rick, for the thought. I appreciate it. But I'm not hungry. I don't want to eat. I'm not sick or anything. When I get up in the morning and she serves breakfast, I'll do justice to that, as you say. That ought to make up for the fact that I, I didn't eat tonight. I'm just too tired. I, uh, I gotta go to bed. You know, War of the Worlds is gonna be on TV for the first time tonight. Why don't you come watch that with me? We'll have a good time. Come on, Alan. Don't go to bed so early. 
No thanks, Rick. I really am too tired. I just want to read a little bit and then go to sleep. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the morning, brother. Good night.